नमो तस्से भगवतु अरहतु सम्मा संबुद्धसे नमो तस्से भगवतु अरहतु सम्मा संबुद्धसे नमो तस्से भगवतु अरहतु सम्मा संबुद्धसे गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन एंड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द डा नाथ द डा मकी वेनिस सेशन दिस इस काइंड ऑफ a series about uh, Parisamuppada and then we will be looking at uh, this Nidana called Upadana today. Upadana means clinging and today is day 22 because we've been talking about uh, five precepts and then eight uh, factors of the Noble Path and then we've been uh, conducting the Parisamuppada series as of now. Upadana, this is such an interesting uh, term uh, plus uh, nidana which is conditioned by uh, tanha last monday we've been talking about uh, tanha craving craving is just the strong desire but uh, it is said that once you have craving then you are conditioning the application of the strong desire that means you are plugging you are plugging that into something so uh, it is like that you are shopping some items uh, in a grocery store and then you have put things inside of your cart but you haven't checked them out. So this is the, the time that you are going to check them out, which means checking them out means that you are making upadana. So upadana means the actual process of uh, putting tanha, putting the strong desire, craving into action. Uh, sometimes we think that uh, although we have craving, but uh, we still can sort of uh, pose it. But uh, when you have strong, too much tanha, uh, then what happens? You are putting those tanha into cravings, into application. That means uh, upadana. Okay, so upadana has a couple meanings. So what is upadana? Now, there are many English translations, grasping, taking up holding on to clinging. Actually, uh, I use the common generic popular term called clinging because uh, our mind's tendency, natural tendency is to grasp, is to cling to something. This is the normal, <clears throat> the natural uh, thing that is happening with the mind. Mind doesn't like not to grasp not to hold on to, not to cling to. Mind prefers to cling to, mind prefers to hold, mind prefers to uh, grasp, mind prefers to take up. That is the nature of the mind because mind is a place where we understood uh, as being an empty village, right? So the external objects uh, steal the peace of the mind. So this, this steal the empty village, right? So mind's tendency to hold on to, taking up, grasp, cling. All these uh, activities are being taken as upadana. Uh, let's uh, decombine the word called upadana. So it's a combination. Upadana, which means upa means uh, closeness, I would say, uh, nearness and adana means you are pulling pulling uh, towards you so you are pulling towards the vicinity of you you are pulling towards the nearness of you let's say uh, there are uh, you know objects of uh, clinging and what you are doing is that you are pulling them towards you you're pulling them in the vicinity of you. They are there, but you are pulling them. So that means uh, uh, upadana, upadana. When we decombine in Pali, you can see how it is combined. And the, the real meaning is that you are pulling the objects of upadana into you. Okay, so can we sort of guess a good reference of upadana in our Pali knowledge, in our sutta reading knowledge? If you can remember, Sangyutta Nikaya 
this is none other than the sutta called Dhamma Chakka Path and Sutta. In this sutta, this is the sutta that Buddha first, uh, you know, taught or gave to uh, an audience. This audience consisted of five monks, Kondanya, Vapabhati, Mahana, Masaji. In this first maiden Dhamma talk, the maiden discourse, he explained about the Dukkha. Now, the same thing is being explained uh, back by Arhan Sariputta in the uh, Satcha Vibhanga Sutta Majbhinikaya 141. Uh, we can see that uh, how Upadana, the word Upadana, uh, has been explained by uh, these two uh, suttas. Now, Upada, the word Upadana is tied in with Dukkha. Now, Jatipi, the birth is uh, Dukkha. Uh, and then uh, jarapi dukkha, which means decay, aging is dukkha, uh, dissatisfaction or suffering. Vyadi, uh, getting sick is uh, dukkha or uh, uh, suffering, dissatisfaction. And then uh, marana, death is uh, suffering or dukkha. Appyehi sampayogo dukkha, associating uh, associating with the people that we don't like is also the correct this happens uh, in today's world right you don't like those people but you have to be with them for some reasons and then separation from the loved ones is also dukkha pehe vipayogo dukkha right yam pichang nalabati tampi dukkha and you don't get what you expect all the time right and that is also a dukkha and then in short sankittena panchapadana kanda dukkha and then Buddha thinks that uh, if someone can still not able to uh, is, is not able to understand what the dukkha is all about, then the Buddha says all these these different forms of dukkha spring arise because of one thing, sankittena panchapadana kanda dukkha. Any clinging to five aggregates is dukkha. Actually, birth decay or aging, sicknesses, death, separation from the loved ones, association with the uh, people we don't like, and not getting what we want. All these are reflections or outcomes of not understanding. The attachment, well, I would say, clinging to the five aggregates. We call it Panchu Pada Anakanda Dukkha. So it is not just a panchakkanda. Now panchakkanda means five aggregates. Actually, we don't have five aggregates. I, I mean, we don't. Our, our struggle is not with the five aggregates. Our struggle is with the panchapadana kanda because because our five aggregates are always connected to the uh, clinging. Oh, our five aggregates are always associating with. Uh, Clinging. So clinging is always with our five aggregates. So that is the problem. If five aggregates are uh, there without clinging, it's okay. Now, this is what happens to Arahans, and we're going to be talking that uh, in a while. Now, when uh, an Arahant is going to be, I would say, when, a, when somebody is going to be an Arahant, the, there are uh, two types of uh, Arahanthoods, I would say, Nibbanas. So the first arahanthood is called sopadisa nibbana dhatu. Second uh, arahanthood is called anupadisa nibbana dhatu. That means the sort of arahanthood that one attains by uh, crossing the sansara is the arahanthood with five aggregates. Because uh, even the person who attains uh, an arahant has to have five aggregates until the person uh, passes away. But the, but the ultimate, the real, the complete arahanthood will be coming to that person when that person passes away. Because the, at that point, uh, he, uh, he finishes this uh, aggregate body. There are no aggregates uh, henceforth. That means there is a strict difference, clear difference between five aggregates and the five aggregates with clinging. Now, dukkha arises 
not because you have a panchakkand but because your panchakkand the five aggregates are associated with upadana panchupadana kanda this is why the buddha said if you can understand what is dukkha then you need to immediately look at how your five aggregates are being associated or are being conditioned by are being supported by are being uh, victimized by clinging so the topic called clinging is a big topic i would say this is the place where you apply your tanha into the action now we've been talking avijja sankhara vinyana nama roopa salayatana pass uh, vedana and tanha they are sort of uh, nidanas links that are uh, previously arising because uh, because you are in the sansara but when you make upada when you make this clinging thing only there will be jati i mean your next lives will be creating because of clinging so that's why clinging plays a bigger role uh, in this uh, parisampada process so first i would like to tell you that upa uh, upadan simply means clinging to uh something so there are four main things we call them upadani upadani adam things that can be clung to uh, we all know those four they are very famous uh, so any clinging to any of these four objects is considered to be uh, creating forming upada clinging so we have to first look at what the parisampada context Uh, of upadana uh, you know talking about because we take upadana as a part of parisampada process so let's uh, read uh, the famous the popular uh, sutra that i've been normally using for explaining parisampada nidanas sangita nikaya 12.2 vibhanga sutta there we can see how uh, did the buddha explain what Uh, upadana is in the context of parisampada katamancha bikkave upadana what monks is clinging chattari mani bikkave upadana okay there are four kinds of clinging so there are four objects of clinging that you are pulling these objects into the vicinity of you okay so that's the uh, simple meaning huh? let me see the comments uh, Okay, Dhamma folks, if you have any questions uh, that are arising in your mind uh, during the discussion, or if you have any pre-questions, or if you come up with any questions uh, during the conversation, please type them in. I can take a look and I can uh, answer them. So uh, please keep that in mind. So there are four kinds of clinging. So I would call them objects of clinging. So what is clinging? Pulling. these four objects into the vicinity of you they are there but you are pulling them into you the vicinity of you what are they kamu padana so the first object of clinging first type of clinging is clinging to sensual pleasures now this is what happens to us on a daily basis so on a daily basis we always uh, sometimes we are happy with the uh, pleasures that we are having sensual things sometimes we are not ha- we are not happy sometimes we are struggling with things that we do want sort of uh, expand our karmas on a daily basis or maybe uh, uh, you know over the time so anyways so we pull karma we we uh, use karma uh, for upada so we are we are creating uh, you know Uh, karmas pleasures uh, as a upada that's the first object second is dittu padana what is dittu padana clinging to views clinging to views views mean all the mitcha dittis the opposite of samadhi right silabbatu padana very interesting one clinging to rules and vows now our friends they always say i'm 
practicing Panchasila, you know, eight precepts and many precepts. So I'm good. Today, I'm going to disclose something really interesting, which the Buddha talked about the sila. So very interesting. So any clinging to your sila, if you think that I am the best person, I'm the, I'm the uh, most capable person of uh, practicing sila, five precepts, eight precepts, whatever, whatever. Then you are sort of practicing a clinging. Sila is there to go into the next level, samadhi and panya, not just to end up in sila and then to sort of uh, argue, compare with other people's virtues, precepts. Clinging to uh, rules and vows. The last one is attavadupadana, clinging to a doctrine of self. That means clinging to uh, the idea of self, sakkaya ditti, I would say. Now, now ditti uh, under the uh, second clinging object is taken as all the dittis. Uh, ditti is about, uh, uh, you know, external world, internal world. But uh, uh, the last one, attavadupadana, means that you are uh, clinging towards a self. Actually, because of that self, you are having all these ditti. So I would say uh, Attavadupadana is the is the genesis, uh, the birth of, uh, origin of uh, all the dittis. But anyways, it was given, uh, those two were given separately. So so what are the four objects of Upadana? In, in short, I would say, in summary, I would say, how do people make Upadana? People make Upadana in four ways. Kamupadana. Dittu padana, silabhatu padana, attava, attava uh, du padana. That means kamu padana means people cling to sensual uh, pleasures. Then uh, dittu padana means people cling to views, political views, religious views, dhamma views, right? Educational views, health, health views. How many views are there? A lot of views. <laughs> so dittu and Interestingly, people also cling to their precepts. Five precepts, eight precepts, precept, precept, ethics, all that. Not even to precept. They are vows. Even to celibacy. Celibacy also a vow. Uh, even to promises. Right? So if you, uh, you, you also tend to uh, cling to vows and rituals. I would say, uh, in short, I can say uh, precepts and vows. And then, Attavadupadana means you cling to the idea of a self, uh, Atta, Atta concept. So they are objects of your uh, clinging. So they are the objects uh, in which you will start clinging to. So uh, if you try to understand uh, these four contexts of uh, clinging, then you will have a less chance of uh, getting clung uh, to these uh, objects. Okay, so let's uh, sort of uh, get into details now. Okay, I have a question here, Bhante, how not to cling to our thoughts. So that will, will be our last part of the discussion. So I will keep that in mind. Okay. Kamu Padan, the first object of clinging. Now what is Kama? Kama means there are different uh, explanations of different words about karma. Karma, karma chanda. What is karma chanda? Where, where does karma chanda arise? Where does karma chanda, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, get explained under the five hindrances? So, in the list of five hindrances, we see the first one is karma chanda, sensual desire. Karma raga. Kamaraga simply means lust, especially the sexual desire. Sexual uh, desire is called as Kamaraga. And Kama Tanha. Kama Tanha is the broadest term where we see all the Kamas. All the Kamas are part of uh, Kama Tanha. Now, let's take a look at how, uh, the, the sort of process of how Kama affects us in our life. Now, what is responsible for our sensual lust? It is the same lure. Now, we know there are a couple tendencies that we all have. Even when you were uh, 
uh, at the time when you were born. Even a baby has, even a baby has these uh, tendencies. We have seven tendencies. We call them anusayas. Anusaya means the, the, the kind of defilements that are always sleeping, that are always dormant within us. They are not penetrative. They are not visible, but they are sleeping. When you practice meditation, unless you are getting into a sort of attainment, they are sleeping. They are dormant. But once, once, and once a favorable object arises, probably uh, impinges on you, then those sleeping dormant tendencies start to arise. What are they? There's a sutta called Anguttara Nikaya 7.11. Anusaya Sutta. In this sutta, it, uh, it is given, these seven as Kama Raga. So Kama Raga is one of the dormant uh, defilement, which is always with us un until we attain uh, Anagami. Second one is Patiga. Patiga means, what is Patiga? Aversion. Patika means that you have a very strong denial. We have a very strong uh, hatred towards someone, somebody. So it is also dormant within us. None of us uh, uh, is uh, exempt from these one. Okay, so the first one is raga. Second is patika. Third is ditti. You might be a ditti free person, view free person, but you may still have the tendency to have a ditti, right? Now, for example, you uh, may see the people who are doing a lot of harm to other people, right? Out there on the internet, uh, on TV. So those people have messed up. But don't we have the same uh, intentions if we want? Yeah, we can. But what's going on with us? With meditation, with understanding, with less ditti, we are, we are managing our anusayas. But those people, they have messed up. They can't, they can't take those feelings. Uh, in a realistic way. They think they have to do it. So that's why these are dome. So this is the difference between uh, a criminal and us. So the criminal can handle this one. So he's or she's simply taking it to, uh, uh, you know, to public. But, uh, but uh, uh, a person like you, who is practicing kusalas and practicing meditation, you know that these are dome and they can arise. They can, I want them to sleep permanently. If we could. So that is uh, what we call uh, the tendencies, anusayas. So the second anusayas, particular third one is ditti. The fourth one is vichakecha, doubts about uh, eight things, different things about the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, uh, previous life, your previous life, your future life, uh, both lives, uh, uh, doubts about what is samuppada, so and so forth. And then mana is also dormant. It's also sleeping uh, within your uh, deep uh, down there. Man is also one say conceit. And then Bhavarag. Bhavarag means ten uh, tendency to crave for the continued existence. So it's to be reborn, reborn. That's a, uh, that's a, that's a, no. because, because if you can uh, get yourself out of the Bhavarag, that means you don't want to be reborn again. You want to attain Nibbana, at least Sodapan. The seventh one is avicca, ignorance. So ignor ignorance is the fundamental reason of why we are here. So, so these seven are called anusayas. Let me see. I saw a question related to anusaya. Bhante, uh, social media people like to post what they eat, where they go. Is this clinging to own views? Is this bad? Well, all depends. All depend on how, uh, on their intention. So I would say, uh, we cannot directly say that it is, it is, uh, it is a upadana because that is kind of, kind of labeling them right away. But I would rather say that uh, if you are happy with what you eat, and we are so happy for you, so uh, we can say exactly. But if they are too much uh, into what they do. I mean, too much into food and too much into all these things. Definitely there is upadana. So uh, just because they are posting, we can't say they have upadana. But uh, if they feel that they are too much into food, too much into stuff, definitely there is uh, the first uh, upadana, kamukta upadana.
is clinging attachment grasping come after the nidana tanha uh, yes so when you have a strong desire that means tanha definitely it is followed, followed by uh, clinging so if you don't like then you are not uh, uh, trying to cling to right so definitely there should be a strong desire is anusaya inherited from past lives ah uh, yeah because your bhavanga vijnana which is uh, going to be out of this body once you uh, expire from this life so so uh, I, i i can't say it is anusaya i can say it is the bhavanga vijnana which has all these karmas so if you still carry karmas definitely there is a an opportunity for anusaya to uh, tendencies tendencies to uh, play a role so it is because of anu it is not because of anusayas we are uh, tendencies because we are existing it is because of avijja and we are creating karma so we have anusaya what is being clung attached grasp immediately after the nidana tanha in the ribbon yeah i mean if you have a strong desire which means tanha then definitely you are clung to these four objects because of that then upadana pachya bhavo your next life you have a better you have so many uh, uh, opportunities to be reborn again so this rebirth is a problem too right in buddhism it says it's bhavarag right bhavatanha right so that is how we have to see uh, the aftermath of upadana okay let me get back to uh, you know the first uh, the, uh, object of uh, clinging but please uh, do post your question so i will take a look now what is the nature of a person who has lot of karma now we all have karma but if you can really manage your karmas you are a good person right so i'm always be, uh, you know uh, trusting about a feeling that if you if we can manage our karmas although there are multiple uh, plenty of karmas that are that we have but if you can manage if you can be mindful with your own so manasika wise attention we are good we don't need to worry about it okay so i wanted to talk about an analogy about what can happen to someone who is too much into karma now there is a sort of analogy where we see a leper now leper has a lot of uh, you know uh, wounds so what can happen to a leper who cauterizes is of her wounds over a fire and scratches them experiencing momentary relief through an act that aggravates his or her condition now we know when somebody has a wound especially a leper uh, the more they uh, cauterizes uh, the harmer i would say uh, the happier they are but at the end the wound is getting aggravated because he he thinks that the more he cauterizes uh, the happier he she is but but eventually what happens is that he is sort of aggravating uh, the wound people who are into karma uh, play the same role same thing in order to understand the consequences of karma we have to go into a sutta called potaliya sutta now uh, this sutta we have uh, what we call uh majjhima nikaya 54 in this potaliya sutta the buddha compares sensual pleasures to meatless bones that are not able to satisfy a dog's hunger now when you give a meatless bone to a dog dog wants to bite it all the time but dog doesn't feel satisfied it, it never appeases his hunger so majjhima nikaya uh, 54 potaliya sutta explains lot of such uh, similes about uh, the futility the futile efforts of the people who are into kam and also if you can see maha dukkha kanda sutta majjhima nikaya 13 there also uh, we can see lot of uh, similes of the futility of the or the futile nature of the karmas but uh, dhamma folks keep in mind we need some karma that's why the buddha says uh, appasada dukkha kama buddha never said karma doesn't have any value 
if karmas don't have anything to enjoy then people wouldn't have uh, entered into karma right starting from uh, sensual things right sights uh, sounds smells taste touch thoughts if there is no happiness if there is no happiness with these objects then people would have not gone into them there is a happiness but it's a little happiness temporary happiness short term happiness that's what the buddha says but people they get dissolution of the happiness that they have they think that it is long standing there may be some long standing happiness types but uh, they are also subject to anicchitta dukkana okay so let's get into the second one dittu pada now in the dhamma sangani uh, text it is abhidhamma text it says sabbapi miccha ditti dittu pada that means all the miccha dittis wrong views they are belong to dittu pada which means if you don't have samaditti right view that means you have not even ditti ditti as a clinging because you you are clung to the t uh, that was how many of you can remember uh, the 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 the, the uh, formation of how does uh, the ticket form the ticket form because of lobe because when you when you are liking an ideology or a view then what happens uh, there is this nature of lobe so when you have a ditty that means you have an expanded version of lobe that's why ditti and mana which means uh, view and uh, conceit uh, they are both given as expanded versions uh, of lobe in abhidham so all the miccha dittis are part of included in the the two pada now in, uh, in clear terms uh, you need to get away from miccha ditti you need to have samadhi if you have samadhi then you won't uh, you know regard about uh, regard for any uh, miccha dittis wrong views so to talk about uh, dittu padana i wanted to bring up a nice array of suttas that we can see in the sutta nipata the sutta nipata is a very good place to uh, understand a lot of uh, complexities intricacies of the buddhist uh, thoughts now a lot of people say that uh, the attaka and parayana chapters of sutta nipata are the oldest uh, text but uh, there are mixed uh, thoughts about um, these sections of sutta nipata anyway so i would like to quote the sutta called dutta attaka sutta Uh, duttattaka sutta is appeared in Sang- uh, sutta nipata 4.3 uh, this is under uh, attaka vaka now in this sutta buddha explains how attachment to one's views makes it difficult to relinquish them now we on a daily basis we are attaching to our views we never notice that even to dhamma sometimes people talk about dhamma when other people have a discussion over them they getting into arguments they getting into trouble right so how do we understand that there is a problem there is a problem with ditti when we talk about dhamma so when we talk about dhamma everybody has to be peaceful everybody has to learn from each other at the same time we should never attach to dhamma this is why the buddha said in alagaddu pamasut in majjhima nikaya nittaranattaya no gahanattaya dhamma is only to cross the sansara not to not to hold on to not to cling to not to take up not to grasp but a lot of people they don't cross the sansara they cling to the they they pile up the dhamma they pile up they they only focus about the language language is just a concept right reality is beyond the concept that's why we have to understand that how we are forming our views on a daily basis even we talk about them even we discuss the them now what about other secular chores when you are having a family in a household and how many arguments springing up on a daily basis right with your kids with your husband with your wife with your coworkers right then what how many how many views that uh, we are likely to uh, form right 
So we have to be very careful. Are we attaching to the views? It's okay to have a view, but do not attach to the view. Let's say you are a researcher, you have to have a view about the, the work. Uh, maybe you uh, are a low abiding citizen, you may have a political view about the life. Uh, I mean, the country's life, country's future. But do not hold on to it. Just have it as a view, but do not hold on to it. So uh, this sutta called Duttattaka Sutta, sutta Nipata 4.3 points out how we attach to our own views and how difficult it is uh, to relinquish our views. And then another sutta called Paramattaka Sutta says, uh, Sutta Nipata 4.5, the cause for unending quarreling, it is the esteem for one's view and the consequent looking on any other view, looking down any other view. So most of the problems, quarrels, commotions, fights arise because we personally would like to, you know, give high regard uh, to our own view. We don't care what other people believe, what other people have to say. So this is the fundamental reason of why we have a lot of issues with our views. Pasura Sutta, this is uh, 4.8 uh, Sutta Nipata. It says that uh, people always try to gain victory through their views and they fear defeat when they want to talk about any view, when they want to uh, see things uh, with other people, when they discuss anything, they, they, they fear the defeat uh, from the discussion. Actually, if you are a real Dhamma follower, you don't need to be uh, uh, feared about any anything that you have in your mind about Dhamma. Because Dhamma is an open place. Regardless you are, of you are a monk or nun or a lay person, if somebody uh, explains to you the Dhamma in a clear way, so you have to be open up. Right? Uh, you have to open yourself for that Dhamma so that you will understand Dhamma properly. Otherwise, if you think that what I hold is the tr the most truthful thing, uh, and then uh, uh, all the other people are having the false views, then I will definitely not learn the Dhamma. And I, I will uh, naturally have a clinging towards the Dhamma. Because it's, then we are taking Dhamma as a view. Sutta Nipata 4.12, Chula Viva Sutta mentions, this is very funny, huh? all debating monastics should be reckoned as fools. All debates. Now, de debating is a problem in the, in the early text. Also, such dogmatic upholding of one's view is but a manifestation of conceit and lust for one's views. It has two manifestations. One is that um, it is a manifestation of your mana conceit that you know that that you know better than other people. At the same time, you lust, you crave for your, or you, you cling to your own view. So these two play uh, a role uh, in, in, in taking you to the uh, upadana. Okay. So that is what we call by the two pada. So if you attack, if you cling to your view, which means if you have michaditi, you are already uh, clung to your view. This is the second object of two pada. Third one. This is very interesting. I really want to mention uh, lay emphasis on this. Silabha two pada. Now, I would like to uh, quote uh, two Dhammapada verses uh, where Buddha talks about the price of the sila. Dhammapada 271 and 272 verses which uh, come under Dhammatta chapter. Na silabhata matte na bahu satche na vapana atava samadhilabe na vivitta sayane na vapana pusami nekhamma sukhaan aputujjana sevita bikhu vissasa mapadi appatto asa vakya meaning not only by mere moral practice that means not only by mere sila now a lot of people think just by practicing sila something will happen to them not only by mere moral practice oh no by much learning bahu such learning a lot of dhamma from here there you know a lot of book, reading a lot of books so just practicing sila and 
uh, reading Dhamma books or uh, Dhamma online or whatever books. Not even that. Atava Samadila Ved. Know by acquiring concentration. Jhanic happiness. So uh, so now there are three things. Huh? Some there, there are people who only practice seal. There are people who practice seal and then at the same time they learn a lot of Dhamma. There are people who practice seal who learn a lot of Dhamma and then also practice also at uh, concentrate they having samadhi no by dwelling in seclusion not only by living uh, in an empty place no by assuring oneself i enjoy the bliss of anagami fruition that is not enjoyed by common worldly puttujanas should the monks of monastic rest content without attaining the extinction of moral intoxicant asavas without attaining the now uh, the Gata says, uh, even if you practice a lot of seed, if you learn a lot of Dhamma, even if you have a lot of Samadhi, even if you have a lot of other virtues, assuming that you are an Anagami person, that has no price if you don't attain Arhantu. Now, uh, this story uh, that is attached to the uh, Gata. Uh, is very interesting. Uh, now let me uh, so explain to that you that story. Now there were monks who were practicing a lot of sila, samadhi, a lot of dhamma. They are learning dhamma. They they are attaining different jhanic uh, uh, attainments, and some even attain anagami uh, positions. But they were not concerned about attaining nibbana. And the Buddha said, when you compare. What you earn with Nibbana, what you earn is nothing. You should all try to attain Nibbana. So this is a clear place not to end up with Sila, not to end up with Samadhi, not to end up with uh, Jhanic happiness, not to end up with, you know, uh, Sotapanna, Sakadagami, Anagami. You have to move forward. You have to move forward towards the Arahantra. If not, you are in trouble. So that means... Sila Bhata Paramasa. Uh, in other words, this is the third uh, Sangha Feta. And here, Sila Bhata Upadana. So why, why do we think that we should so much cling to our Sila? Uh, people cling to Sila precepts when they only uh, pers pursue the moral practice. Moral practice has to be there with other things, with plans to go into other levels. Uh, that is why we always... Uh, uh, ask people to practice sila, samadhi, panya at the same time, not only to end up with sila. A lot of people, they end up with sila. Only keep practicing sila until the end of life. You need sila to get into samadhi and panya. If you don't uh, get into samadhi and panya, this is it's a problem. That means you have sila patu padan. So, if you are a person who only thinks that uh, Sila is the only thing that I want to do, you are not going anywhere, uh, as the Buddha said. Buddha said it is it is it is not uh, uh, beneficial for you only to practice Sila because uh, you are not moving towards moving forward to uh, towards the Nibbana. The last one, last object of Upadana is Attavadupadan. Now here it is clearly uh, uh, you know seen that this is uh, clinging to a self, right? So people get clung to a self in many ways. Now especially we know in the uh, suttas, we know that how people cling to a self because they think uh, uh, rupa exists, rupa is me, so and so forth. They think Vedana, feeling is me, and I exist in feeling, right? When they look at uh, Sanya, they think Sanya is me, or oh, uh, I, I am in the Sanya perceptions. Uh, they may also uh, uh, see that uh, I am Vedana, and Vedana is in me. So they sort of, uh, you know, clinging towards, uh, clinging to uh, Panchakanda. So the Buddha says that we should not do that. This is why the first fetter that we can see in the Buddhist teaching is Sakkaya Ditti. If you want to get through, if you want to, uh, you know, cut the first uh, fetter, Sakkaya Ditti, you must 
you must get rid of the 20 types of uh, Sakha Aditi. Now, uh, there are many suttas about this, even if you take uh, uh, Chulavidara Sutta, uh, or uh, I would say uh, the famous Sabbasu Sutta, you can see that how it was given uh, in clear terms, even Parisambhida Magga. So you have to get rid of these 20 types of Sakha Aditi in order you not to cling to uh, a self. That is what we call by Atravadu Padan. Now I'm going to talk about something very interesting. Now, a lot of people think when they get rid of the first stage, Sotapanna, they wouldn't have any Sakha Aditi. But there is a Sutta called Kemaka Sutta. Kemaka Sutta appears in Sanyata Nikaya 22.89. It says something very interesting. Let me read for you. Now, though we think Sakkayadit is permanently stopped at the level of uh, Sotapanna, but there is still a trace of I concept, uh, you know, uh, keeps going. If it is not, then how come someone who has already attained Sotapanna still want to desire for Ruparaga, Ruparaga? So the uh, reading is this. Kemaka Sutta, Sangita Nikai 20.289 explains this. Still a trace of I in regard to five aggregates remains. Even though you have overcome Sakkai, but still a trace of I continues. There's an example given. Now, there's a dirty cloth. And you want to clean it. You're going to clean it with the help of salt or cow dung. Though after rinsing it in the water, this dirty cloth, yet a remainder of the smell of the cleaning, salt and cow dung still pervades the cloth. Even you, uh, now let's take a modern example. You want to wash a dirty cloth with bleach, right? You know that uh, the, the cloth will be very clean. But even though after cleaning with bleach uh, in the washing machine, you can still smell the uh, bleach smell. In the same way, in the same way, even though you have, now, now think Sakka uh, to be a dirty cloth. And then you, but the, pro, the, 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 the thing that you do to the dirty cloth is you are getting rid of the dirty cloth. Let's say you are attaining Sotapan. But still, you have a trace of, you have a slight trace of, I would say, I wouldn't say Sakai Ditti, this I, trace of I still keeps going up until you attain Nibban. Otherwise, if you completely get rid of Sakai Ditti, otherwise, how come you still have? Uh, Desires for Ruparaga, Ruparaga. How come you're going to navigate on a certain path? I want to attain Sakadagami. I mean, if you get rid of uh, Sakkayaditi completely, how come you have a thought? I want to attain Sakadagami. I don't want to stay, I don't want to stop uh, at being a Sotapan person. I want to still continue to be a, a Sakadagami person. Even after attaining Sakadagami, I still want to go, get into the Anagami attainment. Even after you have an Agami thing, you still want to continue to be an Arahan. And in the list of Arahans, uh, you know, process in becoming Arahan, you still have to get rid of Ruparaga Rupara. That means even though you sort of uh, get rid of overcome Sakkai, a trace of I continues to go. That is what the Kemaka Sutta Sangyutta Nikaya 22.89 says it is like a dirty cloth. When you wash the dirty cloth with salt or cow dung, even after washing it, cleaning it, you, you smell. You can have the smell of the particular uh, thing that you use to clean it. In the same way, you still have a trace of eye that is continuing. Now, I'm, I'm actually explaining that in order to say that how this... Uh, Attavadu Padan has to understand. Let's see what are the 
upadanas that are that are uh, uh, you know overcome that are overcome by somebody when they are overcoming different uh, fetters kamu padana is only overcome it is only overcome by somebody who attains anagami level because we know kama raga is uh, gone but the problem is what is rupa raga rupa raga there is also a raga but kama raga the, the kama raga so i would say uh, desires for kamas will be overcome at the point of uh, anagami but still different raga still keeps going because you are still having rupa raga rupa raga desire for being born in reborn in a material brahma world or immaterial brahma world what about the two padana padana at which point you are overcoming uh, dittis sotapanna because you are uh, uh, overcoming sakkaya ditti what about silabbatu padana ya silabbatu paramasi you are uh, overcoming it at the point of becoming a sotapanna person attavadu padana sotapanna but still a trace of i can keeps going okay questions who can overcome all these upadanas only anaga means but still he has rupa and arupa uh, uh, desires i already explained that right which kanda can we cling are we clung to are some kandas not able to cling very interesting question now the vibhanga uh, vibhanga the book called abhidhamma book called vibhanga explains that only the sankhara kand formations aggregate only for the formation aggregates we are clung to other aggregates they can only be clung to upadanis very interesting huh? that means that means we are normally clung to uh, we are normally having upadanas to sankara kanda because sankara kanda has all the past events everything and even when you are continuing with your life you are bringing your sankaras right uh, other kandas that means rupa vedana uh, sanya and vinyana they are normally taking the objects of the four objects of clinging that means they only take they can only take the other objects now mostly most often we are clinging to the sankara kan because sankara kan is the place where we have all the imprints past imprints and present imprints all the memories and everything what's the difference between panchakkan and panchupadana kan let me tell you only arahants those who have attained nibbana have a panchakkan payagi all the other people even anagami they have panchupadana kan then what do we have we don't have a panchakkanda we have panchupadana kanda because our panchakkanda is our five aggregates are victimized by clinging but the five aggregates of arahants buddhas samma sambuddhas pachyaka buddhas are just panchakkandas and their panchakkandas are not uh, you know victimized by uh, clinging so now from today you can say you have panchakkanda you have panchupadana kanda interesting ah huh? any question so far how does hiri ottappa mitigate clinging a very good question now in abhidhamma we had to go to abhidhamma in abhidhamma it says uh, when we do a akusala kamma there are four akusalas uh, always uh, uh, you know involving uh, with our akusala activity they are moha ahirika anottappa uddach in order for us to execute make a akusala kamma we should definitely have more ignorance we should definitely have more uh, uh, you know uh, lack of moral fear ahirika we should definitely have uh, lack of uh, moral fear uh, moral shame and moral fear of tapp uh, and then restlessness of the mind that means that means if you have hiri ottapp if you have moral fear or tap if you have moral shame hiri you are definitely managing yourself not to uh, 
further kama uh, kama ditti sila and attavadu padas so it, it definitely help us okay i think that's it but i would i would like to uh, read some of the uh, very famous uh, pali uh, statements about uh, upadana so uh, if you have any questions so please uh, post them here and i will answer uh, the, the question asked by uh, henry uh, heng sherry at the end because she asked a question about uh, how not to cling to our thoughts so that's our last question upadane bayang diswa okay the buddha always asks us to see the fear of being clung to these four types of upadana because we should understand we can easily get clung to kamas which means sensuality and then uh, dittis views and then silapatas that means uh, ritual precepts and vows and then attavadupadana which means uh, self so we had to be very careful because uh, we can easily get clung to these things we had to see the fear of being clung to anupada vimuchanti which means having not clung to something or those four things we can release anisito viharati nachakinchi loke upadi see uh, now this is a this is a uh, sentence uh, part of section from the satipatthana sutta that you are not uh, you are not attaching to anything right and then you you are not any more uh, clinging to anything in this world okay so these are the, so i wanted to say that uh, the the greatest things that we have to learn with this topic upadana is upadana is the is the actual pro actual application of your tanha now tanha is tanha is the prior one but simply because you have tanha we can't say you are upa, making upada sometimes you keep tanha to you when you are not making anything but most people when they have tanha they immediately they are starting the uh, craving process uh, as the text is itself uh, uh, describe we have a we have a high chance of creating upadana once we have tanha but how we can stop our tanha uh, uh to get into the upadana process I mean when you have tanha i mean if you can take care of you even before tanha even at the point of vedana you are okay but let's say you have a tanha you have a uh, you have a craving towards sensuality you have a craving towards a rebirth you have a craving towards not believing the next life so if you can understand how does my tanha make up what are the things in my tanha why i am into tanha then you have a better chance of not Uh, clinging into karma those four types of objects so that that's one thing even if you can't uh, uh, make your way out of uh, uh, tanha then let's say you are into padana at least if you know today the four objects of uh, padana crave uh, clinging then you can contemplate okay just because i have tanha why i want to make it to a uh, next level the next level is uh, clean i want to stop myself uh, in being carried out uh, by clicking so i i mean uh, simplest way possible i could i could suggest that if you can use yoniso manasikara wise attention of what you are doing what is happening within you you have a better chance of not uh, going into the next level called upada from tanha to upada even you can't uh, make your way out of tanha but let's say you are into padana but even at that point if you can have wise attention don't so much care and then satipatthanas you have a better chance of not being stuck in the padanas but uh, this is easier than said because once you have upadana then you have a, you are far more susceptible to be re- uh, reborn but if you clearly understand today that my karmas can give me a hard time i can they can even take me to pada my views are can give me a hard time they can even take me to 
upadan my uh, what do you call precepts and uh, vows when i over practice when i overdo these things or when i do without a focus uh, in getting into samadhi and panya can take me into pada give me a hard time uh, the thoughts that i have about me i'm good i'm a good person i meditate i listen to dhamma talk and all that right can also take me to upada so i need to be very uh, careful i need to find out my balance upekka so you are fine then practice wise attention yoni somaskara and posadi patanas you are good so that's what you can do in order to get it off uh, what do you call upada any more questions i don't think there are any other questions so let me uh, transfer good karma to the departed relatives and the deities may all the good karmas that we've been accumulating in all these ways be transferred to all the departed relatives who passed away in the name of all of you may all uh, the departed relatives who passed away in the name of all of us be happy and peaceful may they attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 idam me nyati nanghu tu sukita hun tu nyatayu idam me nyati nanghu tu sukita hun tu nyatayu idam me nyati nanghu tu sukita hun tu nyatayu also let's share all the good karmas with the devas and nagas the deities and the nagas these powerful beings May nagas and deities share all these good karmas we've been accumulating by sharing them. May they be happy and peaceful. May they bless all of you, all of us, for good health, quality of your life, and all the things, all the good things in your life. May the nagas and deities, devas, also attain the supreme bliss of nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. ಚಿರಂಗ್ರಕ್ಕಂ chirang rakkhang tumang paranti finally let's uh, make a great wish this is the greatest wish that we all have all the time but we want to have that as soon as we can may all the good karmas we've been accumulating in all these ways be helpful for all of us to attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 now i am going to bless you with couple more stanzas please receive the blessings abhivadana silis nichang vadha pachayinu chataru dhamma vadhanti ayuvannu sukham balam ayurarogya sampatti sang sampatti nevach atu nibbana sampatti iminate samijjatu sadhu sadhu Okay, dumb folks, if you have any more questions, please uh, type in uh, the comments. At the same time, uh, I'm hopeful that there will be more discussions, interviews coming up in addition to these Monday uh, discussions, Q&A sessions. And uh, please stay tuned. Okay, and please continue to take care of yourself and have a good uh, morning to those who join from Asia. Have a good evening for those who join from here. Have a good day. Take care.